What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network here to bring you some more news in the Attack on Titan field. Sorry about that, roommates, I haven't moved out just yet. I will be soon though. Anyways, now the whole thing that I did a topic on before with Attack on Titan, you guys might have seen that video. It was about the amusement park ride that started in Japan and that's one of my most popular videos now for some reason. It has almost 100,000 views. But we are now seeing some more stuff about that. Apparently it has been released in Japan. It's all public now. And there's some character models apparently that are outside of the ride. I don't know what form factor these things are in. But they're a little bit strange as you couldn't tell from the thumbnail. We have at Kotaku here this, this header picture which is just disturbing in a lot of ways. This is uncanny valley to the maximum, you see? And this is where a lot of companies struggle because it's so difficult to make real life adaptations of anime characters and have them still look natural to an extent. You know, how natural can you really ask for when you're involving anime characters? But I mean, I've seen some companies do it better than others and this is this is how not to do it. Look at his fucking face, man. Like, I, the face is one thing, but the eyes. Why do they always mess up the eyes so bad in their real life adaptations of anime characters? You know, we saw some really good work in terms of Levi in the last video that I made in this, um, in this whole amusement park thing. Levi actually had a great looking character model from what we saw. He looked like a real human, but at the same time looked like Levi. So that was an excellent example of what I was talking about. But this is not. Anyways, let's read further into the article. So it, it isn't like they took the anime characters and made them look real. It isn't like they took the anime characters and made them look real. That's exactly what they did. They being Universal Studios Japan, which starting tomorrow is opening an Attack on Titan attraction at its Osaka theme park. It's actually today. This article is from yesterday. Earlier today, I checked it out as part of a press review. Dubbed Attack on Titan for Real. It's a walkthrough attraction which replaced key moments from the anime on the big screen. However, as the attraction gets closer to its finale, there are realistic wax-like statues of slaughtered Survey Corps members. It's rather gruesome stuff. Wait a minute, so it shows them? It doesn't just show the characters, you know, like the Survey Corps members who were there standing like that. It shows them mangled and fucked up like they did Petra in the goddamn trailer. And by the way, one thing that I find hilarious is that so many people got on my ass in that last video about my pronunciation of Petra. Like, they were like, why are you pronouncing the R's like that? Etika, you're not Japanese. You don't have to overextend yourself to kind of fit the way they say things. I do it for the fuck of it. It's hilarious. I mean, Petra! <laughs> it's fucking funny. That's why I say Shrek. Like, <laughs> Shrek. <laughs> not, not, not Shrek. No, not, it's not Shrek. It's not Petra. It's Shrek and Petra. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> you see what I'm doing there? Anyway, so, um, Let's see. However, the attraction's climax has large lifelike statues of Attack on Titan characters with Armin, Levi, and Mikasa. They're not one-to-one -one scale, and they are slightly smaller than real people, something I think that keeps them from venturing completely into total <laughs> unnerving Uncanny Valley territory. <laughs> You're damn right! If you do not know what the Uncanny Valley is, I'm going to have a link to a Vsauce video that explains it, but Uncanny Valley is a point in human identification. Like, for example, let me see, how can I explain it best? This is Uncanny Valley, right? This army is Uncanny Valley. And the way that you reach Uncanny Valley, it's, it's a point of fear, right? The Uncanny Valley is fear. The fear of another human that you know is not human. The one thing that the brain hates the most is being deceived. So when you see something that's perceived as a human being, but you see something off about it, which isn't, the brain perceives it as a threat. It perceives it as something disturbing. And that's the way this works. You see, this army looks human, but there are certain things which are off about it that make it so he's not human. The brain picks up on those, and it tells the body to be scared of it. It's a defense mechanism, and it might have been used when we were like older human. Like it might have been used by our ancient ancestors at some point to identify what was a threat and what wasn't. But the uncanny valley is that point where something is almost human, but there's something that throws it off. Because if you're looking at another, you know, human being like your mom or your dad, you look at them and you're like, okay, you know, this is a regular human. This is somebody who I know. It, there's nothing to be scared of here because they look totally human. There's no way for you to identify that they are not human because they fit all the features that a human being would have. The symmetrical, the symmetrical features of a human's face, um, you know, the, 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 the regular physical features, nothing's too off about them, which makes them uncanny valley. 
But when you see something that attempts to be human, that is almost human, but there's something a little bit off about it, that's the uncanny valley. That point between being fully human and being something else. That point in the middle where, you know, human and something else mix, that's uncanny valley. And it's so fucking disturbing. If I look it up right now, uncanny valley, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Uncanny Cali, uncanny valley. There we go. Boom. So now, images. Let's look at this. Um, this, like, for example, usually you see Uncanny Valley when it's human-like robots. Human-like robots, which almost look 100% human, but there's something off about them. That's Uncanny Valley. This is disturbing. So, um, yeah, man. A lot of this happens in video games. As long as the model isn't made to look 100% human, then usually you're fine. Like, it's when something tries too hard to be human, but one thing is off, that's when it's uncanny. That's why anime characters usually don't get Uncanny Valley, because they're not really made to look like regular humans. But when anime characters try to look too human, and they fail somewhere, it's uncanny. Which is where this article mentions how Armin is Uncanny Valley, because he's actually not trying to look like an anime character here. He's trying his best to look human, but he doesn't look human. That's the problem. They would have been better off just making like real life, you know, anime character replicas, not like actual human-like replicas. They would have been better off making like anime adaptions of them in real life with models rather than making them look human-human, you know what I mean? Anyway, so let's move on to see what the others look like. Um, I didn't really get to see what Armin, I mean, I didn't really get to see what Levi and Mikasa look like because I didn't scroll down the article, I'll say first time reactions. Um, but yeah, they're not one-to-one -one scale, and they're slightly smaller than real people, something that I think keeps them from venturing completely into total, unnerving, uncanny valley territory. But they do look impressively real, giant eyes and all, that is, like real-life anime characters, and check out the detail on the uniforms and equipment. So, you know, Levi, he pulls it off a little bit more. He looks a little bit more human, you know, without those big-ass fucking eyes. And this is one thing that I mentioned earlier in the video, the fact that the Levi model that we saw in that video, the trailer, was really well done. And um, you can see that replicated here pretty well, too. Um, yeah, they're right, though, about the detail, man. This looks extremely well-polished. Everything seems like it got paid a whole lot of attention to, so really good stuff there. Um, even his hand, yeah, wow, look at that. Very good stuff. Let's see what the Mikasa one looks like. Yeah, wow, he looks really fucking good. Like, you know, like, I mean, no homo, but this Levi model is really good. Now, this is the way that you make anime characters adapted to real-life human beings. Not this. No, 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 no. Oh, excuse me. I tried to. Not this. Not this. No, that, 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 the big eyes don't work with real life, but this is fine. He looks pretty human there. I don't really get an uncanny feel from that. Um, let's see, though. I want to see what Mikasa looks like. She's a little bit off. A little bit off. I mean, goddamn, they even gave her fingernails. Like, goddamn. <laughs> they really went in with these character models, but, um... Wow, I want to see a close-up of her face. Yeah, she looks a little bit off, too. It seems like they did well with characters that have small eyes, but with characters who have big eyes, they're not doing so hot. They should have followed Final Fantasy's example, but I mean, hey, still... Very interesting stuff here. The army one is definitely the most disturbing out of all of them. It's fucking eyeballs, man. That's the one thing that throws it all off for me. But I mean, still, very impressive stuff. Oh my god, did they really have to... Did they really have to freaking show it like that? Like, wow. But I mean, still, very good stuff. Attack on Titan the Real can be experienced for a limited time only, and the attraction ends its run at Universal Studios Japan May 10th. We're probably not going to get anything like that in America, but hopefully we do. Maybe at Universal Studios here in the U.S. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think of this whole thing. What do you think of my um, whole Uncanny Valley explanation thing? I think I did pretty, pretty damn well. I love fear and the concept of it in human beings and um, scary stuff like that. You know, I'm into the paranormal shit. Anyways, I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care of yourself. Oh, by the way, this is water. Take care of yourselves. And of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.